Welcome to the Porn Free, Shame Free podcast, produced by Caleb Micah Ministries. We hope God uses this resource to help you pursue freedom found only in Jesus. Well, hey, thanks for being with us today. Just uh, if you've been following along with us in the BLAST acronym, we're going to be talking about another one of the, the S words in the BLAST acronym, SHAME. And what I will tell you is that all of us struggle with shame. Um, All of us. I think it's woven within our DNA. But I will go so far as to say that there is greater shame over things that we do that are sexually immoral. And you say, Josh, why would you say that? In 1 Corinthians 6, it talks about the fact that the sin one commits against, the sin one commits sexually commits against oneself. And I think that's why the shame is greater. Shame is not a new concept. It's actually introduced in the Bible in Genesis chapter three. If you know the story of Adam and Eve being created by God and then they give in to sin and all of a sudden they realize they've sinned. Verse seven, very interesting response. It says the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. If you look at Genesis two, verse 25, Um, It talks about how the man and his wife were both naked, but felt no shame. Now they realize they're naked. And the first thing they want to do is to sew fig leaves together to make coverings for themselves. What does shame cause us to do? It causes us to cover up. See, guilt says, I feel bad about what I did. Shame says something's wrong with me. I got to cover me. I got to fix me. It doesn't stop there. In verse eight, they hear the sound of the Lord God in the garden and it causes them to hide. Verse 10, when God calls out to them, the reason they were hiding, they say, is because they're afraid. Verses 12 through 15, what they do is start blaming each other. You know, Eve blames the serpent. Adam blames the woman. What shame does is it causes us to cover up. It causes us to hide. It causes us to feel fear. It causes us to blame others. And if you're in a sexual sin struggle, it causes us to stay in that struggle because we're always constantly feeling the shame and trying to numb the shame and it never numbs it enough. And you say, well, Josh, what would help me? I don't know what you believe theologically, but what I believe the truth of the Bible teaches is that sin entered for all of mankind once Adam and Eve sinned. I don't know about you. I've had some bad days where I've messed up pretty bad. I felt like I hurt my wife or I felt like I hurt my whole family. I don't, I'm not familiar with days where I've hurt all of humanity for all time. That's a bad day. But if you look at verse eight, It says they heard the sound of the Lord God and they hid. Well, how did they know what the the sound of the Lord God sounded like? Oh, I can tell you how. Because he used to come to them in the cool of the day. And we don't know how many days. Was it a few days? Was it a few weeks? Was it a few months that they lived perfectly without sin? We don't know. But they know what it sounded like. Guys, can I tell you something? On their worst day, God still came to be with them. And yeah, there were consequences for their sin and they were kicked out of the garden. But verse nine, the Lord calls to Adam and Eve and here's what he says. He says, where are you? Guys, I believe on our worst day, God calls out to us and says, where are you? Why? Because he wants to be with us. What if we knew in the midst of our deepest sin struggle, in the midst of feeling our most intense shame, that Jesus wasn't doing this to us, but he was coming to be with us. Yeah, sometimes to discipline us, to correct us, but always to be with us. And if you look at verse 21, He covered them up with better coverings, animal skins, 
that require the sacrifice of an animal that I believe foreshadows the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. If you're watching this and you're drowning in sexual sin, would you hear in the midst of your shame, in the midst of your sin, Jesus wants to be with you and wants to cover you with himself, with his righteousness. And that's the only thing that's gonna help you provide a way out. Would you let him meet you in your sin and shame? Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that those watching this would know on our worst days, you show up. God, thank you on my worst day that you showed up. And on the, the days I continue to have that aren't great, you show up. God, would you give them the courage to place their faith in you and that you would meet them in their sin and shame, cover their sin and shame, and help them learn to run from shame and to run you to you to pursue freedom. We say it in your name, amen.